Oh, we're just recording. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Is this thing on? I'm just kidding. I know it's on because I set it up. Um, but I also wouldn't trust myself. So, well, here we are back at it again. I'm really excited to kick off a season two of this podcast. I started it back in 2020 after I lost my job and really just had a moment of what the hell am I doing with my life? And yes, it was a pandemic and um, I'll give myself some grace there, but um, it was one of those moments where I felt like I had the dream job and factors out of my control basically ripped it out from underneath me. And it really made me think about my identity, my worth, and how, you know, I've tied those things to work. And then you rewind even more and how much I tied my identity to soccer and being an athlete and brief little spark notes on me uh, and why this is such an important topic in my heart uh, is because I grew up playing soccer my entire life. I was obsessed with the sport, just loved it so much. It was my entire world. And I was always known in my family and my friends as the soccer girl. The girl plays soccer. Every question at Thanksgiving, how's soccer going? And I loved that. And my goal was to play Division One soccer. And I did that. And it was obviously incredible to make it to that point, but it wasn't everything that I thought it was going to be. And I had several years of not playing and lots of injuries. And I really prided myself on uh, still being a positive light on the team. We'll call it that. I was a glorified uh, water girl. Uh, made some fire playlists for the locker room, did everything I could off the field because I wasn't getting any playing time. But then my senior year, I finally landed a starting position and I felt like I had truly made it. And then five games into the season, I had a career ending injury. I had my seventh diagnosed concussion. And I knew in that moment that my career was done because they had told me a number six, they're like one more and you're done. I don't know why that's lucky number seven, but it was for me. So I knew in that moment. Um, and of course the doctors told me you could no longer play. And in that moment, you feel like part of you has died. <laughs> it's so dramatic, but it's so true for anyone that's gone through a career ending injury. Uh, that's truly the feeling. So my identity felt like it was ripped from me and it was really, really hard to figure out who I was outside of soccer. What am I good at? What else do I like? Who am I outside of this sport? But that is why I am so passionate about having these conversations with prior athletes, current athletes, people who are so passionate about their sport and being an athlete, but also how they've overcome that struggle with identity and being more than just their sport. So that's the gist of the podcast. Uh, and I'm excited for season two. We've got some awesome guests coming up. For this first episode, I'm really excited to have one of my coworkers, I guess you could call her, um, fellow Chicago Fire employees. We both work for the Chicago Fire MLS team here in Chicago. And it's Michelle Fumagalli. She is the team dietitian and she has got a really inspiring story. So brief little spark notes on her because obviously we talk all about her career, but she grew up playing soccer. Got my soccer girls on here from the jump. Uh, and she went on to play for Notre Dame, this incredible program, and then ultimately was drafted to play pro. She played overseas in Germany. And then post-career, she still had that fire to be an athlete. And she picked up CrossFit. And okay, so not just picked it up. She ended up falling in love with CrossFit and ultimately uh, qualified for the CrossFit games, the world games, basically the Olympics of CrossFit. And it obviously took her years to get to this point and just such a remarkable accomplishment to even qualify. And then obviously we get into the story, but something pretty major happened uh, day one, event one, uh, that was life-changing for her um, at the moment, not in the best way, but the way that she has processed it and overcome it and now shares her story is really inspiring. So uh, I won't blab on any longer and we'll get to the conversation uh, with Michelle. I'm very excited to have Michelle on the show, on the podcast. Woo! New season, season two. <laughs> How annoying am I? <laughs> All right, energy. So Michelle and I met. How do we meet? 
my new job, of course, with the fire. So Michelle, you're currently the uh, dietitian. What is your official title? Uh, the team, the club's dietitian, pretty much Chicago, Chicago fire FC's dietitian. So I work with the first team, the second team, the Academy, I'll read the fueling, um, injury prevention, work with guys who have injuries, anything that has to do with food or supplements or anything like that, um, goes through me. I know. I feel like I'm always asking you to like, what can I eat? Like, is this good? Like my stomach hurts. Like, why does my stomach hurt? <laughs> What's wrong with me? Like, I love nutrition questions. No, I'm like, please. I tell everybody, I'm like, if you have a question, please come and find me. I love to talk about nutrition and food and sports and all those things. So yeah, I'm in the, I'm in a great place, but yeah, that's how, that's how we met. Mm-hmm. Great meeting. Mm-hmm. Well, I find you all the time to ask questions and eat your chocolate that's on your desk. I've been having probably, I think it's too healthy chocolate. Well, it's, it's, I dive into it every time I pass it, but anyway, moving on from the chocolate, let's back up a little bit and we'll start with your, your soccer career. And obviously you have a decorated soccer career playing for Notre Dame, playing with the red stars. Uh, but let's just let's start simple. When did you start playing soccer? Since I was like four or five, um, yeah, I played forever and I was always on a winning team, which was phenomenal. I, I, we talked, yeah, I was like, I don't, somehow my team always pretty much won. So that was, I was very competitive and I always had to win. Um, and I was a very, just very athletic. Um, so yeah, like I was on a pretty winning high school team. I went to Notre Dame. We went to four final fours. Um, I played professional with the Red Stars and played in Germany professionally for a year. Um, and that was phenomenal. I think with soccer, I think my biggest weakness was, um, lack of confidence, um, in college. Uh, like I came in super confident and then coaching, my coach just um, kind of ruined my confidence, unfortunately. Mm. <laughs> and so I like, I just wish I was so much more confident in myself. How much better could I have been? Um, and really like nutritionally, I it was not, it was super poor. And um, I had like horrible body image and like probably disordered eat, definitely disordered eating, horrible relationship with food. And that just stemmed from like my team's culture. So, wow. you know, Yeah. So I could have been, I feel like I could have been so much better (laughs) if I was like more confident in in different areas and not only in like myself, but um, yeah, that diet culture and that uh, disordered eating and things. So, you know, but again, like things happen for a reason and, you know, we ebbs and flows and we learn from things and, um, you know, just helps me tremendously now working with others and being able to see that each side. Um, but confidence is huge, especially for females. Yeah. And I feel like you just said so much there that I obviously want to dive into. I'm trying to figure out which direction we even want to go in because I can totally relate to that confidence piece, especially that hitting in college, because not that I was on like a ton of winning teams, but growing up and I don't know what it, what it is about being young and kind of fearless. And then I'm wondering for you, was there like some sort of switch that flipped in college? Like, did you change as a player due to that lack of confidence? Once you hit college, like, were you a different player beforehand? Like when did that sort of mental aspect? Yeah. I'm, I mean, so freshman year to give you a thing, like I went in there and um, like my goal was to be a starter and to be an impact player. And, um, I, my best year was my freshman year by far. Like, I I think me and Lauren Cheney, I was, it was me and Lauren Cheney for like the best freshman of the year. Oh, wow. Lauren Cheney got it, obviously. She's badass, but or Lauren holiday now, but, um, yeah. So like I had, yeah, it was a phenomenal freshman year. And I really think it's just because I just did my own thing. Like I went out there, I was feisty. I was fearless. I wasn't afraid to lose the ball or make mistakes. Mm. Um, and then someone got in my head and then that changed. Right. So, um, so yeah, I mean, and, you know, it only makes you a stronger person in the end when you learn from it, but yeah, you know, it just is what it is. Um, but <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, so that's, but it's, but I still was like a good player. Mm-hmm. Right. But I just never had that same year that I had freshman year. Yeah. And some of it like was an injury here or there, but more so I think it was between the years. Yeah. Did you feel like you went into college? Cause like Notre Dame, like that's an incredible program, oh, yeah. big name. Like what was that pressure? Like, first of all, just with that name. I mean, I love, I work well under pressure. Like I, huh. I love like end of season is my yeah. jam. I like, I do really, maybe that's why I'm a procrastinator. I don't know. <laughs> you but, need to wait till the last but, second. <laughs> but I work pretty well under pressure. So um, yeah, I was, I was all about it. So, but did you feel like, I mean, there's that love for the game too. And so many players experience when you go to college and all of a sudden that's all it's about is like, you're a college athlete and your whole life is just like wrapped around that. And you almost feel like there's a point. I don't know. Did you feel like you lost your love for the game or did you still always have the love for it? But there was this added, like someone else, as you said, was in your head. You know, I started losing the love in professionally because mm. professionally it's a job yeah. Um, and in college, like it is a job, right? I tell people like, if you want to play in college, it's a complete job, but it's still not like your profession. I, yeah. you know, like you're a student, student first, as we mm-hmm. said at Notre Dame, yeah. student first. <laughs> and, um, but professionally, that's when I started losing my love. Mm-hmm. Um, because like you were, it was your job, which is so cool. But then yeah. like, it was just like politics and stress and like that was hard I think I think that's when I was like not enjoying it as much yeah I feel like not enough people realize that because like you said you go pro and it's like from the outside this is the coolest thing ever like oh my god this is the culmination of everything you've worked for and then you get to go pro so what were some of the things that were happening that sort of like where you lost started to feel that loss of love for the game they wanted me to be an outside back. I've been a forward. Ew, my whole life. gross. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we need them. <laughs> I mean, I was a forward my whole life. You want me? And again, like my like nutrition was bad. My body image was poor. Um, my confidence was low. Right. Um, I was trying to fit into this mold that I wasn't, or a player that I wasn't, or maybe I just wasn't good enough. You know. But it just. But in Germany, it was fun. I had fun. But then you had all the you know, stresses of being in another country and, you know, not having a support system and being, um, alone. Right. So there was that whole thing too, but I still, I mean, I still, I loved soccer in Germany when I, um, was on the red stars, I was starting not to like it as much. Mm. Um, but yeah. So, I mean, I still love soccer now. Um, I don't play it really, but I'm around it every day. Yeah, you are. (laughs) Aren't we all? (laughs) It is awesome. That I feel like that's a really cool aspect of our jobs is still being surrounded by the sport. Cause I know that as like an athlete, it's real. it's just hard to let it go because it's what made you who you are for your whole life. You're like, Oh, I'm a soccer player. Like that's just who I am. And so when your playing career is done, some people can just like dip out and be like, okay, I'm done with the sport. I need to get away. But other people like us are like, no, I still want to be a part of the sport in some way. I don't know if that's something that you felt when you started to pursue more of like a professional career. Were you thinking of it in that sense? Yeah. You know, it's just like a cherry on top being able to be surrounded by soccer. When I was finishing, like I coached soccer, I worked for Gatorade um for about four three four years in marketing after I finished playing soccer and so but I got to coach so I was still around the game I coached you know girls like nine ten and eleven mm-hmm. so fun um and that was a great transition um and then so I was with soccer and then I found nutrition which I was was like I worked with dietitians at Gatorade and I was like, my eyes just opened. I'm like, why did I not know any of this when I (laughs) played soccer? Yeah. How how did I not know this? Um, So I just started diving into nutrition, went back to school to be a dietitian. Um, And it was funny because everyone was like, oh, you're totally going to work in sports. Like you are going to be a sports dietitian. You're going to work in sports. And I almost didn't want to because everyone was saying, I guess it was so obvious. Everyone was saying I was going to work in sports. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. I don't think so. 
lo and behold, I, that's where I ended up when I didn't think I was going to at all. And it's perfect. And it's so funny because my mom, who knows me best out of anyone, is like this. And, you know, people who are really close to me, they all say, this is literally the perfect job for you. Like, you love soccer. You know soccer, right? We know soccer. So it's mm-hmm. just so nice to be around it. Yeah. Um, and it's like your two loves, you know, yeah, two, two out of a couple other loves, but Dude, <laughs> you yeah, you're like, oh yeah, my kids, and my, my kids, my <laughs> husband. Yeah. That's yeah I forgot their name. But yeah, no. So it's, um, it, it's perfect. But, uh, but transitioning out of soccer, you know, I, I coached soccer, which was great. So that was kind of a thing, but like, so I still had that, you know, close, close ties to it. Um, but what really helped me transition out of soccer where it wasn't a big deal was, um, I found CrossFit. And cause I, when I was in Germany, I knew I was going to retire, um, from soccer and I was like, Oh my God, what am I, what am I going to do? Because I know for that fear, it was that fear of gaining weight almost, Mm -hmm. right? Yep. Which we all have. And, um, or yeah, because society, um, diet culture and all that horrible things. We can Um, get into that too. (laughs) Yeah. And so I was like, well, I'm not, I can't just go to the gym and work out. Like I knew this, like, I'm not just going to go to the gym and work out. I need to Mm -hmm. find something. And one of my girlfriends who I played soccer with growing up, she had like, on her Instagram was all this crossfit. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. Like I'll try that. So I was like living at home and like um, working at Gator or maybe coaching, or I don't know if I was at Gatorade, but like there was a crossfit gym down the street from my parents' house. So I went there. I actually met one of my best friends there. I was like, in her wedding, her and I did the half Ironman together last year. But so I met her there. She was living with her parents too. You know, it was perfect. But, and then I just fell in love like after a couple months, just completely fell in love with CrossFit. And I was pretty, as actually okay at it. So mm. my, you know, um, naturally athletic body was pretty good at CrossFit. Um, and then I started competing in it. And then I, so that was that competitive drive, but this was yeah. something entirely different because it was an individual sport, mm. not a team sport. Yeah. And um, I liked that. In this, in this time of my life, I loved the team aspect of soccer and I was younger and we got, it was just, you know, so much camaraderie and friendship and, you know, we just made, made each other better. And, um, but in my older adult life, mm-hmm. the, the individual sports, I just really liked, um, because it was on my time, it was on me, yeah. um, you know, and it I, you know, I could do what I want or I could not do what I want. <laughs> and um, yeah. yeah, it was really just on me. So like not only physically, but like mentally mm. that like aspect of it was different too with competing and things like that. Um, but that really helped me transition from soccer because I found something else that I could compete in. Um, and like really cha- the thing I loved about CrossFit was like, there were so many things to get better at, Mm. if that makes sense. Like there were so many things to improve, or I should say so many areas to improve upon. And I'm all for that. So it was, that was a nice transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's also one of those things that's like really structured or it can be structured because there's that fear, like you said, of just going to the gym, let me just show up and work out and lift some weights. Like as athletes, people think you just know what you're doing, but honestly, the whole time we were growing up, people were telling us what to do. (laughs) And like, we had a coach, we had a program, we had a plan. And so I know some of my friends, my teammates, like we did marathon training, but CrossFit's the same thing. Like there's structure to it. And you like, our brains are just wired that way to like have a plan and follow it. So it makes sense that that was like a natural transition for you. I remember I went to like one of my first cro- the CrossFit, like CrossFit, um, train, whatever classes. Yeah. And I told the instructor, I was like, yeah, I don't back squat. He's <laughs> like, I'm like, it just hurts my back. 
He's like, gonna well, learn we'll today. Back. Like this twenty-two-year-old is telling this coach, "Yeah, my back hurts when I cross, when I back squat." He's like, "Well, we're gonna back squat today, so we're just gonna work on your form and make sure you're doing." Yeah, but I mean, just so funny. But you're absolutely right. Where it's like, tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Mm-hmm. And I'll check it off the list, and it'll be great. No, yeah, hundred percent. That's funny. Mm-hmm. And before we go any further, I want to give like a brief timeline. So you're, you were at Notre Dame. When did you graduate from Notre Dame? 2010. 10. Okay. So then straight from Notre Dame, you red stars, or red stars, Germany I started working. And so I only like did that for a year. Okay. Um, how did and you then... get, and how did you become a professional? What was that? process like um so i was drafted by the red stars just wanted to slide and that then, in there we got a draft pick I, yeah i don't yeah i guess yeah crazy so i know i'm just like i'm like it's not even, yeah i'm like yeah it, it is so cool i should be so much more like oh my gosh you got drafted that's so awesome but yeah. like i think i was like in class at notre dame like it wasn't a big deal you you know? like an email like what was give no, us the insights but, what was it like but it is call? i don't even think it was a phone call i think it was like maybe I was watching the draft I have okay. I literally have no, I can't even remember <laughs> so casual. that's horrible I know so like really it was, I know because it shows how far the I sport has come that now it's kind of like an event and like a bigger deal yeah no I don't think we really had that in 2010 okay I mean 12 years ago which seems like a really long time but well regardless you're drafted which is a big deal then you went to Germany for, you were there for like a year, you said? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then not the greatest experience. So that's sort of what, like, did you plan on being there for a longer time or? It was a year contract. Um, and I mean, it was a, it was a great experience. I just missed home. Um, so mm-hmm. I just, you know, I had a boyfriend who's now my husband and, you know, it was just, you know, it worked out. I just, I just kind of missed, missed home. So, um, but it's so funny now. I don't know if you get this too, but like watching, watching like NWSL professional soccer, it's like, gosh, I was totally there. Like, right. Like Mm. I, I think I could have had a great career, Mm. but like I didn't, but like, things didn't fall in place or like I said that confidence wasn't there that like that like nutrition wasn't there like you know just like my fitness wasn't there um but like it's just so funny watching it and being like gosh I totally could have played more years I feel Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's and and that like yeah like not in a like like feel bad for myself but it just like gosh yeah like if I would have done this this or this mm-hmm. I know I could have probably had a good career I don't know if that makes how sense. do you not like let yourself go deep down that hole of like what ifs uh, or you I just mean, do because I do <laughs> yeah but I mean you know like yours was out of your control right and really and mine I think was like it's <laughs> you know and but it, I was just young right mm-hmm. like you're just you're young and things happen and you know you know you just get more resilient and stronger from it I guess um but and and then you know your life might be completely different than it is now right yeah, like yeah so I I like, know, you're not the person who you who you are now if if you didn't go through those trials and tribulations yeah that's a really good way to look at it at it because I feel like it's really easy to look back and be like damn if I only just would have trained a little harder or even just like believed in myself yeah. a little bit more because I think way back when I was the same way like I just didn't like have that confidence and now not that in like a cocky way I feel like I could compete but I'm like if I just would have tried a little harder <laughs> and not yeah, if I was just... so many times <laughs> Right. Or if I just wasn't so hard on my, like, we're all hard on stuff, but like, if I was just more, I just believed in myself more, or I had, you know, not saying I didn't have people around me who believed in me, but just, you know, but again, I mean, there's so many what ifs in life, but um, again, it's just something to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) And I think, you know, I'm a pretty easygoing person. So I think maybe that 
that, that helps me be an easygoing person too. I think it does. Yeah. And so I really, I want to get to the CrossFit stuff, but was you leaving Germany, you kind of saying like, okay, I'm done with my soccer career. Or did you come back wanting to continue a little bit more? No, like I started, I started like, you know, looking for jobs and like, okay, wow. I did the pro thing. Um, you know, like maybe I'll coach or, and I, um, I had like played with the red stars in the summer. We, it wasn't, it wasn't professionally. Mm-hmm. Like when I came back, I played again, I played again the following summer. Um, but it was just like, uh, it wasn't cause the league had gone under. So there was no professional oh. women's soccer league. So, oh, yeah. yeah, it was like in 2012, Maybe it was 2011. There was no league. It's the WPS. So I can't. Mm-hmm. I was that what that was. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is how so like low I key was, you are. You don't even know what league you're playing in. <laughs> so that literally, I mean, it was just like ridiculous. So I played in that league for a couple of years in the summers. Okay. That makes sense. Wow. So like, which was made it more fun. Right. Yeah. So it wasn't like, yeah, because we were just having fun. I mean, like we were being super competitive, but yeah. Cause yeah. I love soccer, but yeah, no, I was, um, so I still had it, um, in my life and I was coaching, but I had a, had a nine to five too. So. Wow. So you kind of had these like overlaps, which maybe was helpful in making that transition transition. And then you discover CrossFit and it's like this new competitive thing that still gives you like those juices flowing of adrenaline and things like that. So you fell in love with it pretty quickly. And then how did you progress to this level of like, oh no, did, did you get that notification upgrading? No. To, oh, I just got a notification. I might need to stop this and restart it. No, you should be fine. Just because it says it say you have to upgrade. Your free meeting will end in 10 minutes. Just with know. two people. Yeah, I know. I thought it was good with two people. That's a perfect too. time to transition. Okay. I'm going to stop this. Okay. Okay. Wow. Back from our commercial break because I'm totally sponsored and have all these partners that I needed a lot of time to break for commercial. Absolutely. I know. (laughs) Okay. One day, one day. (laughs) And we're back. Um, Okay. So good time to transition to what we kind of were already talking about, which was your new love for CrossFit. Again, just gives you that new adrenaline or the same adrenaline you get from soccer and competing but in this new way. So all of a sudden you find this thing that you're like pretty badass at and you're training for several years. And then how do you start to learn about this, this big old thing called the CrossFit games? Yeah. So I have been, I think I started, maybe I'd been doing CrossFit for like a year or Mm -hmm. a year and a half. And then we had this thing called reach. I guess I still have it. They have regionals. So you have to like win regionals to go to the games. So they had um, the, I don't even know. There was different, I don't know what the regional was called, but it was in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, And I somehow made it in. I was one of like the last people to make it in. Um, and yeah, so I did my first regionals. I had had like a coach. Um, I found a coach and uh, which I love, right? Like we love to be, I'm very coachable. Yes. We love to be coached. Yeah. Someone right? tell me what to do. Cause um, I'm not going to do it. Myself. Right. hundred percent. So, um, yeah, I was pretty good at it and I get just got better and better every single year. Um, and then I think what transitioned, right? Like I was a soccer athlete and now I'm a CrossFit athlete. So I'm still like an athlete um and I know at this time I was like you know I I say now that everybody's an athlete but I know at this time I had I didn't believe that I thought like you know like I'm an athlete because I do all these things like this person just jogging down the street is not an athlete right so but we'll get into that in a second how everybody's an athlete but so I was a CrossFit athlete so that just you know, I didn't have, I still had that identity as an athlete, even though I was back in school to be a dietitian or working for Gatorade, like I st- still was, you know, but I was an athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, I just kept on. And then in 2016 or 2015, I should say, 
I, the goal was to make the CrossFit Games for the 2016 season. So like my husband was bored. I had a new coach, like this coach, like I had had this coach for a couple of years. Like we were putting all our ducks in a row for me to um, make the 2016 CrossFit Games. Um, and then I got pregnant. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> so that was a big surprise, um, which was the, it was the best surprise, obviously. So my daughter Gwen was born. So 2016 season did not happen. So I thought I had that dream right? Like going into college, I had a dream of winning a national championship. We went to four final fours. We never won the national championship. It's fine. And then I'm over it. Uh, and then I'm over it. Uh, don't talk to me about it. And then no, it's fine. Um, and then for the, for CrossFit, I was like, I want to make CrossFit games. Like I want to make CrossFit games. So that was my dream. So I thought that dream was done once I got pregnant um because like now there's moms back in CrossFit but there really wasn't any Mm -hmm. um at that time and then so you know I was just doing you know I had my daughter I was so happy I was just kind of you know doing CrossFit for fun but I you know still loved it and you know did some competitions here or there and then um oh actually no this is a that's a lie hold on for (laughs) and then I had Gwen and then I was like I'm I want to make regionals next year like the goals right like we have all these goals and I was like I'm making regionals next year he was she was born in September qualifiers were in February so she would only be six months wow which means you were only six months post having a baby yeah yeah okay just Uh for and I was I was in my dietetic internship uh, starting in January which was like a 40 hour work week that you don't get paid and I was breastfeeding and I was only like, yeah, February, like not even six months postpartum. So I tried with all my might. I, I trained, I was like going crazy. Um, and I missed it by one person and yeah, it, it was, oh my gosh. Yeah. It was, dev- I was so, but my body just literally shut down on me. It failed me. Cause my body's like, F you, Michelle, like, mm-hmm. what the fuck do you think is going on? Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, you sh- we were not <laughs> so, ready for this. Yeah. No. Yeah. hundred percent. My body's like, what are you doing to me right now? Like, come on. Um, so it was a blessing in disguise that I didn't make it really. So then I was like, okay, CrossFit's done. Like, I'm just going to like have fun mm-hmm. and you know, now I'm a dietitian. I have a child. Yeah. All good. I'll just put my eggs into nutrition and parenting. And you were and like, then, at peace, you were like at peace with it sort of, or no, was I was, still but I still had that like dry, you know, drive to, to, you know, do something. Mm-hmm. But then, um, in the back of my head, not like I didn't say this to anyone, but in the back of my head, I'm like, yeah, it'd be really cool to make regionals again. Mm. Yeah, it would be. But I, you know, I was just, I didn't have a coach because I was just like, I'm just going to do my thing. And then I made regionals, like, like just, you know, training on my own. And then I got my coach back and then we hit it hard for regionals and I won regionals. I got top five. I got in fourth place Wow. and I, Yeah. And I made it to the games and it was insane. Yeah. It was a dream come true. It was amazing. For people who aren't as familiar with CrossFit, I'm speaking, speaking for a friend, uh, for me, it's, how would you compare the CrossFit games? Is it, I would say it's like the Olympics of CrossFit. Is that fair? It is. It, I'm a hundred percent. It's Olympics of CrossFit. I mean, it's not the Olympics. It'd be awesome. The Olympics, but I mean, yeah, it is the, it World is stage. the final four. It's the final four, uh, you know, the national championship tournament for anything. Yeah. And it's so it's the top 40 women in the world competing to be the fittest female on earth. Wow. Okay. There's yeah, that's insane. And I feel like you making that is like the culmination of you mentioned the the four final fours in college that you went to and didn't make a championship. The, you know, professional career that you said that, you know, you look back on and you know, have questions. And then 
you were so close and then you have a blessing your baby. So it's like this culmination of all these things. You're like, wow, did that really feel like you did it? Like you did the damn thing. And, you know, and it's like, you have such a support system, right? Like, like such a support system, but at the same time, you know, my confidence was there. I mean, there were some, some ebbs mm-hmm. and flows like on at regionals, but, um, but like my confidence was there. My nutrition was there. My, it was on me, right. It was yeah. all on me. Um, and and so that made it even sweeter, I guess. Right. So it's like, if I F up, it's on me. Yeah. Um, it's not on anyone else. Right. I, I don't know. But yeah. so um, it was pretty, and it was pretty badass because Gwen was only like, I don't know, 15 months old. Wow. So yeah, like I brought her on the, the like field or the podium with me and people were like, is that your baby? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> sure it yeah, it is. My body's screaming it. at me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, I, and it's funny you say it like that, but it's all those, again, those trials and tribulations that, you know, and, and I never thought I would, would get it after I, I never thought I would make it to the games once I was pregnant with Gwen. Mm. And it was even just so much sweeter when yeah. I did. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was, you know, the hardest thing I've ever done, but, minus you know giving birth but um the, one of the hardest things I've ever done but one the like one of the most fun times too being able to train for the games and then and then we make it to the games right and yeah. I'm like the fittest I've ever been you know I had really high aspirations for the CrossFit games mm-hmm. um to finish high and to really like continue this journey of being a crossfitter I feel like addictive right? like, like once you get there yeah, I want more yeah, I want more, I want yeah. more like I'm gonna be uh, you know people are gonna know my name and like right it was like yeah I'm gonna do so well at the games and I'm gonna become a professional games athlete right um and then and then I had a career ending injury the first event done over you know, you're on a high, you're on such a high. And then you go to the, Oh, one of the lowest lows. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah. and then we're here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, I would love to dive into that moment a little bit. You know, you're there, you're at the, you're, you said your peak fitness and you're at this stage that you've worked so hard for and you're in your very first event what happened yeah, and it was 50 so it was a bike crit race I didn't even know what a, a crit race was when they told us that we, this was our first event but it's just a closed loop bike race and we were strapped in like we not strapped in we um, our shoes we had um like what? whatever cycling oh. shoes yeah, yeah yeah like for like the peloton not people yeah, know yeah um and so we had practiced it a couple times um track professional athletes came and like told us how to race like that's really helping us but I was really good at it I was in fifth place the whole race and then 50 yards from the finish um a girl kind of cut me off and I went into a pothole I mean I I fell off my bike 50 yards from the finish line and I landed on my wrist and like tore every ligament and tendon in my wrist and smashed my scaphoid bone crushed my bone <laughs> and uh but I got up right away and like ran the bike across the finish line because I mean the finish line was right there anyone would have done that but um and then I like saw the doctor and he like he's like yeah you're done and I was like okay all right like just matter of fact like you know just hadn't hadn't hit you know it hit me but I was just like I broke down when I was alone with my husband um, and I just felt like I let everyone down. Um, I felt like it was all my fault. I let my coach down. I let my husband down. I let my family down, I let myself down. Uh, so yeah, so that was really, it was, it was really hard. And then, you know, it was, it's like the stages of grief, right? Where a one out of 40, like out of all those females, 
that were there and I'm the one who who was out you know because they had said like someone's gonna get hurt in this and they're gonna be done and it was me <laughs> like even 80 because the men went too and I'm like I was the one um so yeah so that so talk about what ifs like yeah it was really like stages of grief, grief where like you know you're mad you're angry you're resentful you're 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 more like you mourn right you, you mourn your your what it, your what if you mourn what could have been or what was yeah. <clears throat> and that's fine mourn it and and you have to accept it and then and then you know uh you know learn from it and yeah again you're you know just more resilient afterwards and it is what it is and you can't do anything about it (laughs) and um it was great you know great memories and again shape helps just part of my story helps shape the person that that I am so well I will say it's really inspiring so do you have that like your story I, I feel like us the way we described how it was all like a culmination of the the trials and tribulations to get you to that point which is what was so great. And then that same culmination of your experiences in your athletic career, do you feel like those also helped you in coping with what happened? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, it could have been a lot worse. We said too, you know, my, I like my wrist was horrible, but like my head, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know, like there yeah, was a lot fair. of things that could have happened too. Um, and I still made it. A lot of people are like, well, you still made it. I'm like, you know, it's like final four. Like, you yeah. still made it there. And I was like, yeah, I did. And and I did, right? Like yeah. I made it there. It's it's just it's a horrible thing that happened, right? Like it just sucks. It's a shitty thing that happened. Yeah. But it happened. <laughs> right. I think that that's so um, important. Yeah. What you're saying is in, important to just address. Like, you know what? It sucks. Like that was terrible and it's because a lot of people try to like find the silver lining or like turn it to a positive thing off the jump but like a part of grieving is just accepting like you said yeah it sucked like that was a shitty thing that happened because people want to like skip that part and be like you know what but like look at all these other good things that were part of it it's like you're gonna bury the bad stuff and that it could come out later like if you don't Mm -hmm. process it now and accept like you know what yeah this sucks and then kind of move forward yeah like cry cry it out like be mad be angry this sucks this is shitty like 100 percent. and yeah. um and that's okay right it's okay not to be okay right yeah. we, we see that we see that now fortunately um but yeah and then you do find silver lightnings to help you feel better you yeah you're like okay i gotta find those at some point <laughs> yeah but um but again yeah it's just part of part of our story each one of us have our own stories and it's a pretty sweet story most of it lots of lots of things um so I mean I'm still and that's what I said like and then you know I fiz- my body physically like because of my wrist like I can't do a handstand because I can't have my wrist at, like it does not go to 90 degrees just because yeah. there's there's hardware in there like all the ligaments and tendons even like and my surgeon was phenomenal like I literally he was it was over four hours and he didn't think it was gonna be more than two because he just made everything as perfect as he could and it was just a crazy surgery so you know it but my wrist just will never be the same so I physically my body physically you know it was a carotid injury Mm -hmm. um and so that you know like I now I do CrossFit because I mean I did it because I loved it before but now it's just you know I do it in my garage Mm -hmm. (laughs) I used to do it with people but like again it's on my time yeah and I don't have a ton of time so I literally I do it on myself in my garage my husband sometimes or maybe a neighbor sometimes but it's really just my form of moving my body and me being an athlete still, if that makes sense. Right. So I think, you know, going back to everybody is an athlete. If you move your body with purpose, you're an athlete and we all move our bodies with purpose each day. 
Um, Cause I think if you see yourself as an athlete, then you'll, you know, it's a different, again, there's everyone's an athlete. You don't need to compare yourself to the athlete you used to be because what is that going to do? Right. You're in a different stage of your life right now. Um, different things are going on, but everyone can be an athlete. And if you see yourself as an athlete, you're going to treat yourself better. You're going to treat, you're going to take better care of yourself. Mm -hmm. I personally think so. Um, yeah, I think everyone is an athlete and which is great just to celebrate what your body can do and the movement, like moving your body in different ways. Um, so my athleticism now, well, I did a half Ironman last summer. Oh, nine okay. months postpartum nine months postpartum so I gave myself a little bit more time Round two. Um, <laughs> but I s- swim I bike I'll do yoga I'll do crossfit I'll run like I'll play pickleball I'm gonna do tennis this winter I think yeah like yeah. just just fun things right like what do I want to do and I think that's like a huge plus like like find what you enjoy like find what you enjoy find what makes you happy, find what's play, right? We play, like yeah. you still are playing soccer, but like you, it's play, right? So like, find, and maybe, or, or it's meaningful. So maybe you don't like it, but like for women, Hey, I need to do weight resistance training because, you know, I know it's really like women need some weight resistance training, but I don't like it, but it's meaningful. I need to do this. Right. But anyways, so find joy in it or find meaning like have it be meaningful um and that's why we're all still athletes that's that's like such a good reminder because it's really easy to kind of like talk yourself down once you're no longer a quote-unquote like college athlete pro athlete and it's really easy to be like oh it's like to an extreme way like you're worthless like you're you're not worth that anymore and you're like oh I all of a sudden have to find something else that I'm worth and bring value Cause I'm not training and I'm not like competing, but I, that's the first time, like you and I talking about this a couple of weeks ago. And you just like, you're like, anyone can be an athlete. If you move your body with a purpose and it's so simple, but it's not something that I've ever thought about for myself, but is such a good reminder. Like, cause we just tied ourselves to that identity our whole lives. Like, and you're so proud of it. Like you're so proud to be an athlete and to be a competitor. And then when you feel like you lose that, you're like, I'm fucking worthless now. Hey, <laughs> right. I know, but you still are, right? Yeah, you're like you're you're still an athlete. It's just a different, yeah. it's a different chapter in your life, right? It's different kind of an kind of athlete. You're molding. Yeah. You're you know we're continually molding these different things, and we're just a different type of athlete. And we'll continue to change. You know, yeah. like society tells us, change is bad. I mean, like I meant, I mean, from like a physical standpoint, mm-hmm, <laughs> but like. Mm-hmm as a growing athlete, as an aging athlete, which we all are, are, uh, it's going to change. Our yeah. seasons of athleticism will change. Um, and we just, you know, have to still appreciate. I, re- I think the biggest thing was like, you know, appreciating, like thinking of the things you can do versus what you can't do. I think yeah. that's such a huge thing for me. Cause like, I can't do X, Y, Z, one, two, three, whatever with my wrists, but like, what can I do? I can do this and I can do that. Like, you, you know, yeah, you, I can yeah. do so many things. So just celebrating all the things I can do. Um, it's just so important. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I feel like there's so many other things I want to talk about. We'll do a part two. We'll get into like, Perfect. you know, the dietitian, the, the food stuff, but we'll end it here. Cause I feel like that's a beautiful reminder and a way to end it. So thanks Michelle for being on the, the podcast. No problem. You're so no insightful. Very inspiring story. So thanks for sharing and yeah, I will see you at the office tomorrow. See you at the office tomorrow. <laughs> see you at the field. On the pitch for athletes, for competitors. <laughs> <laughs>